By now, the train was up to speed again, smoking along at 300, 320 kilometers per hour. At this speed, the wind could be considered a refreshing deluxe feature for the typical bovine passenger. As I attempted to squirm through the opening, I quickly learned that the typhoon strength headwind could slow down the most dedicated marine. The main thing was not to drop my shotgun as I climbed on the sill, leaned out into the hurricane, and stretched up until I reached the railing along the outside top of the train. I had hoped the zombies wouldn't pay any attention to this latest change in their environment. At some level, they were still human enough to resent this ridiculous crowding, or they wouldn't be exchanging shots. Maybe our team would rate zombie gratitude for giving them elbow room. While standing on the sill, leaning forward into the wind, holding the railing, I reached down to help Arlene. Her slim, dry hand slipped into my sweaty paw, and I noted that it was cold. Arlene always had trouble keeping her extremities warm. I hoisted her out and up to the roof, where she hooked her legs to hang on so she could lean back down. Then Arlene helped me take care of Jill. I didn't blame Jill for being terrified, but I was surprised when she started shaking. Or maybe it was just the train rocking violently back and forth. I guess this would be an experience to write home about, if there were still a home. No matter how brave and grown up this 14 year old wanted to be, she was having one wild ass situation after another thrown at her and had to handle each without benefit of training. The terror in her eyes didn't prevent her doing what she had to do and I didn't pay attention to the tears. The ankle was bad but Jill weighed almost nothing and I heaved a sigh of relief as I finished handing her up to Arlene. Albert was a problem. He was a big guy, and not as gymnastically oriented as yours truly. Arlene and Jill attached webbing to the railing, then attached it to Arlene. The webbing is extraordinarily strong, and able to hold tons before ripping. We didn't go into hell without taking some decent equipment. No way was Arlene going to fall with that stuff on her. Now Arlene and I could help Albert up. It was a lot easier than blowing away a steam demon. We might even have enjoyed our time on the roof if not for the hurricane headwind. It smelled a whole lot better than inside too. We lay on our bellies and a ferocious gale battered us. But we weren't blown off. In fact, we could stand shakily, leaning into the wind. I figured there must be some sort of air dam up front, otherwise, 300 kilometers per hour would have swatted a standing man off the top of that train like finger flicking a fly. Listen up! I shouted against the gal. Single file! Forward! Slowly! Don't fall! Arlene put her mouth right up to my ear. How far LA? Two hours. Dawn. Rescue human or kill him. What? Screamed Jill, clearly horrified. She was plenty loud enough to be heard. There was no need to explain to two old soldiers like Arlene and Albert. I'd stopped thinking of Jill as a young teen, but there was no getting around the fact that she was a civilian. Death better than fate! God only knew how much she heard, but she clenched her teeth and said nothing more. The brutal arithmetic inside my head could wait for another time. I hoped she would never have to decide who lives and who dies. Sometimes, I envy civilians. There was nothing else to say. Besides, we'd all be hoarse from shouting if we didn't shut up. I went first. It was my party. I set the pace nice and slow. It took nearly a quarter hour to crawl the length of the train. Fortunately, the track through Arizona was pretty straight, but the natural swaying of the cars could still hurl any of us to certain death. The rails were laid for cargo, not passengers. I looked back frequently. We didn't lose anybody. Next stop, Relief City. Two cars ahead was the flat car 
with a complement of one spider mind, one steam demon, and one human lapped like a Christmas mummy and strapped down tight. The spider mind was between us and the human, the steam demon on the other side. It occurred to me that these superior examples of alien monster building might sniff us out better than the lesser breeds, and the wind did a lot to erase our lemon odor. In our favor, we were way downwind. The wind was so damned loud I didn't think they could hear us either. I gestured to Arlene. Time for the Demos veterans to do their stuff. We crawled closer where I could see a very narrow gap between the cars, too narrow for adults. And I noted the fact that the spider mind was so big, a couple of its right feet dangled limply over the side of the flat car. And that gave me an idea. But it was too narrow for the adults. Only Jill could fit. Oh man, this was my nightmare come true. It was never supposed to be a walk for the kid. But this? Huh. Throw the raw recruit, not even driving age yet, into the meat grinder against a spider mind and a... Uh, a steam demon. It was criminal. Homicidal! But what were the options? Not even Arlene could squeeze into that slender space. She probably outweighed Jill by 40 pounds. They were like two different species and thinking of me or Albert down there was a joke. Feeling my gut clench as well as another part of my anatomy, I said to myself, time for the recruit to do her stuff. The levity didn't work. I still felt sick. We crawled back and huddled with the others in the gap between two cattle cars full of zombies, where we could hear each other at least. I felt like a class A creep giving Jill her assignment but nobody else could do it. Anyway, the kid seemed eager, not afraid. She'd make a good Marine. Did I say that before? This time, my plan had more details. Jill would shimmy down into the tiny gap between the two cars, using some of the webbing. Just like Spider-Man, she said. Well, whatever. We'd use all the positive fantasy images floating in her mind. She had to believe in herself absolutely to pull this off. If they spotted Jill, she'd be dead meat, and the rest of us with her. Once she made it into the gap, she would very carefully loop the webbing several times over the nearest limb of the spider mind and pull it tight, without allowing the spider mind to notice it was being hobbled. She would attach the other end of the webbing to the titanium grappling hook the president had included in Albert's gear. We could do that before she started out. We'd lose the hook in some of our webbing, but with luck, we'd lose the spider mind as well. If she makes it that far, I said, wrapping up, she drops the hook to the ground beneath the wheels and ducks, waiting for it to catch on a tie or something. And that gross bug gets yanked off, she said, grokking the plan immediately. Gnarly idea, Fly. I let her savor the image of the alien brain scattered across the countryside, slamming into the car behind at better than 300, per ought to do the trick nicely, and Spider-Man would defeat the spider creep with a thick dose of poetic justice. Now, all we had to do was make it work. While Arlene and Albert prepared the hook and line, Jill let me wrap it around her waist. She asked me to do it personally. That meant a lot to me. Then I gave her a gentle push forward and hoped Albert's God wouldn't choose this moment to desert us. I put in a good word for Jill with the nuns as well. Jill climbed down the side of the car we were on, two cars back from the flat car. So far, so good. I climbed down after her. We crept forward at will level, crawling alongside spinning death so slowly it made our previous trek along the roof seem like a drag race. Mother Mary, I thought. Please don't let there be any fence posts too close to the tracks. We very carefully worked our way around the wheels, but if we were any higher up the train, 
the spider mind might have us in its sights. Hunkering down at the wheel level, we were hidden by the side of the car itself. There was enough light to keep Jill in my personal viewfinder every step of the way. I imagined her knuckles were white. Mine sure as hell were. I kept pressed right up against her back, my arms on either side of hers to make sure she didn't slip. We finally got to the edge of the flat car. Now the show was entirely Jill's, and all I could do was hang and wait.